Yeah, I like clapping. Clapping's good. Yeah. Makes me happy. Dance, monkey dance. Um, so, uh, so I'm Stacy Mulcahy. I'm Bitchu Codes on Twitter. Um, I'm okay with my username. Uh, you should be too. I've had it for a while. And um, as the, I'm not going to talk too much about me particularly. I kind of want to just take you through maybe what brought me to what I'm doing now, which is a little weird. I've been in tech for, I don't know, like 15 years. It's scary to even say that. Um, and this is something I started recently. And so um, Young Gay Makers is an initiative to get young kids uh, to love code, to love tech, um, to kind of love each other uh, through game making. And so this actually just something I started up and, and uh, I'm kind of getting a little bit of steam with it. And so I want you to meet Amanda. And Amanda is a 16-year-old. She is in Halifax, uh, Canada. So if you hear me, if yeah, I'm Canadian, so I don't have my bag of milk with me or my hockey team. But if you hear the A or the boat, you can understand where I'm coming from. And uh, in my job, I have to go to a lot of conferences and I have to speak at a lot of things. And I'm always just going in and out. I'm, I'm just literally going there. I'm doing what I need to do. I'm talking to, you know, I'm meeting people. I'm talking. But I'm not investing myself at that place at that time. And I've been doing this for 10 years. And it never really actually even crossed my mind that if I'm at a conference for three days and I'm speaking and I'm talking to people and all that kind of stuff, why am I not showing them how to do things? Like, why am I not giving them the skills they're looking to get, but they probably won't get from someone just speaking, right? And so um, Halifax had this women's event uh, the night before the conference, and typically, I'm going to be honest, I, I don't attend those things. Um, I, I do a lot of work uh, specifically you know, for women in tech, but um, those things kind of, I don't know, they kind of weird me out a little. It's, you know, if I heard there was a men's breakfast, I think I'd be a little weirded out. Like, why can't I go? Um, so I typically don't attend those, but I attended one of these because I was teaching people how to use the Arduino, um, you know, and she sat down at my table and I'd never seen a high school student at a conference before. And so, you know, we started talking and she started talking about her love of games. And so I was like, just asking her more and more questions. And she was just, you know, oh, my parents grew, my parents met like literally online playing games. Like she is a child of games. And she starts telling the story, like literally her parents met online and like that's, and they met online because they were playing games and she grew up and like literally she's pulling out all of her devices, like, and she can talk intelligently about game design, intelligently about a catalog of games. And I'm just sitting there like, holy shit, like this is amazing. And I said the obvious question, well, have you ever made a game? You know, like you're like 16 years old you ever made a game? And she said, no. And I said, well, are you at the conference? And she was like, yeah. And I said, well, I'm here for three days. I can teach you Unity. Do you want to learn how to make like a Flappy Bird clone or like a platformer or something in Unity, which is, you know, popular tool, blah, blah. I start explaining it. I, I will teach you. I said, but it's up to you. You need to come and like say, I'm doing this and you need to find the time. You need to come find me. And so she did. The next day she found me and during lunch we started um, and even during like one of the like open bar sessions, we sat down and she was coding and I would make her do something and then I'd make her start all over again the next time. So, you know, we're doing animation controllers. I'd make her strip them out, do them again. I'd make her like make her own sprite sheets, all this stuff. And I'm pretty sure she was pissed off because she'd be like, well, I just finished that. I know how to do it. But I kept making her go from A to B to C and then back to A again. And, uh... And she was just super determined. Like, it, I've never seen anyone quite like this. And, and it was really weird because she changed my opinion of what I should be doing. And uh, I think there's a, a lot of, we can talk about a lot of the problems, uh, you know, in tech. We can talk about uh, diversity. We can talk about all those issues. And, and talking about it is so important because it opens that door. But I don't think I've ever done anything more than looked at the open door. I don't think I've ever walked through it in quite the way that, she made me walk through it. And, you know, they sent me this article from a paper there where, uh, as a result of sitting down with her, making a game, she now has an internship at a technical company there that they, you know, they do uh, casual games for big brands. Um, you know, she's considering a career in tech. She's, you know, basically said that when I sat down, I kind of 
changed her life, which is weird. No one wants to hear that, right? Because no one wants, I mean, I don't want to be a role model, all right? I don't understand what it means to say no to, like, another bourbon, right? I make bad decisions all the time. Like, I should be no one's role model. And yet, when you hear this, you're just like, wow, this, I have made a change in someone's life that, or I've seen that impact in a way that's so different. It's not like I put up a, a website and I saw someone engage with it. It's not like I, I made a game and I know people are playing it. It's like you see this change in direction and right at the perfect time, you know? And so I started thinking, like, how do, how do I do this? And how do, how do I give back? And how do I get that, that feeling that I don't have a cold, cold heart, you know? Because I really do. And, you know, I started thinking, well, I'm going to start working with kids a little bit more. And I was already in my kind of um, realm of, like, what I was going to do. But this just reinforced that what I was doing was right. And so... Um, you know, the cool thing about Amanda is she was showing her game and she was showing it to guys, she was showing it to girls, she was showing it to older people, she was showing it to younger people, it didn't matter. And it was just like, look what I made, like the pride that you see in that and the, the idea that she already has this confidence and she's just taking it farther and farther. And so, you know, I never would have met her if I didn't go to a women's only event. So, you know, bad on me, Stacy. Uh, I should be doing more of that. But also, I don't think I've ever sat down with someone in a place where I say I have expertise and I can show you something. And I don't know, I'm just so much more into like, let's start showing each other things. And I think that we have a very amazing open community. So I started Young Game Makers and Young Game Makers basically teaches kids how to make games and we'll teach Unity, we'll teach Construct 2, you know, drag and drop, code, it doesn't really matter. The whole idea is there's something for everyone and we just want to get kids together. He will be your boss. He, his attention span, not so, you know, not so much all there, but he knew exactly what he wanted to do. And when he demoed get his game, he knew how he was going to market it. Like, he just sat there like, oh, biz dev man, I need that biz dev man. So, you know, there's someone like Chase, or there's someone like Sarah, and she was just like picked up code like there was no tomorrow, had never touched it before, and has no problem with JavaScript. And she's going to be your development lead, right? And there she is, sitting beside another, you know, kid her age, and they're working on something together. We have Zach, who's, you know, his mom is actually a really um, well-respected web designer, and there he is cranking out this Construct 2 game that looks really, really beautiful and, and can really talk about the nuances of, of games in a way that is kind of just, like, amazing for someone at that age. And, you know, this is Max. Max is always going to make you be better, and he's the kind of person who's always going to have that really unique idea that you think is a little ridiculous, like drawing this game over sign, right? You know, Max came to Young Game Makers with his dad, and they brought their own scanner. And he drew art, and then he scanned it in and used it and basically, you know, created like an Asteroids clone, you know? And so when you start to see this, you're just like, I'm doing something right. And I think right now what's happening when it comes to, um, you know, when we talk about diversity and when it comes to gender, I think people really want to fix things. And super important. Um, but fixing to me suggests that you're putting plaster on a wall to cover a hole. Fixing to me sounds good for a short-term solution. And as much as we need to fix things, um, I want to change them. And I want people to help me change these things. And right now, um, full disclosure, I mean, I, I work with an organization called Code Liberation, where women who teach women how to make games, right? Um, and I think that's super important to be doing. But there is something that's unsettling to me about separating gender. Um, and I think it's important, you know, when you're older, because you, you have these experiences and you have all these other things and that comes along with it, that maybe you need that safe space. But when it comes to working with kids, I explicitly didn't want to do a girls, uh, you know, making games. I didn't want to do a boys focusing. I just wanted kids. I just, I didn't care. And the other thing that I'm really, 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 like, just certain that I'm doing the right thing is that it's not about having 
uh, you know, just kids. It's about having kids see a woman teach them how to make games, seeing kids, a man teach them how to make games, uh, them teaching each other. And for me, that's super important because I think that not only will the girls in the audience say, oh, there's a girl making a game or a woman making a game, I now have these boys thinking the same way, right? And this is important for the, the girls to see themselves you know, reflected in me as is the boys. Um, and, and diversity, again, you know, in terms of, of just the kids, we've got kids from all over with all sorts of perspectives, all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of economics. I mean, everything you can imagine across the board. And you get them in a room, and you get them having just a little bit of fun. And all of that, for even just three hours, goes away. And I don't know about you guys, but for me, just that bubble of three hours is like heaven from what we have sometimes right now, right? And so working with these kids, I try to remove gender. And whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I mean, we can debate that all day long. But you know, if we already have a gap between the gender, I don't want to make it bigger by separating it. Not at that age, you know? I want to keep them together. And so with young game makers, um, basically the idea is, Let's get a bunch of people into the room, uh, a bunch of kids, whatever it may be. Let's teach them how to make games. Let's reach out to the indie game community. So the one great thing that was awesome for me was I was able to reach out into Boston and to New York's indie game community. I got people to volunteer. Um, so they're actually learning this stuff from people who are doing it as a hobby, as a living, you know, as a passion. Um, and so they can actually see that this is possible for themselves because you know that no one's saying to them, oh yeah, you know, you should be a, you should be a game designer. Like their parents aren't saying that to them, maybe even though they should, because they don't understand, you know, that world and they don't understand the art of it and the complexity of it and the beauty of it really. And so it's that idea of getting these kids in the room. And so, you know, kind of how does it work? And the idea is I get, um, I try to get space donated. And so, uh, so I work at Microsoft, so I have access to space. I'm lucky in that way. But in other cities, I try to get space donated. Um, I get people to volunteer. I reach out and I do a lot of time and effort in reaching out to people. Um, if they want to teach, cool, I'm here to support you. I will help you figure out if you have too much content, if it's too hard, if it's just perfect, if it's a little whatever. Like, I'm there to support. I'm, I'm also there to teach. You know, in the morning I'll teach Scratch, in the afternoon I'll teach Unity, for example. Um, and then we charge $10 for a seat. And it's just specifically because how many people here attend meetups? Okay, how many people here say, I'm going to go to that meetup, but you never go, and mostly because it's free, because something came up, right? So really, we just want to make sure the seats are, like, taken. And so we charge 10 bucks for the seats, and I work with an organization in New York called Playcrafting, and what we do is we take that money and we donate it. And we donate it to an organization that can probably teach uh, code literacy better than I can. So it goes to, like, Girls Who Code, or it goes to mouse.org, or whatnot. And so the idea is that we start to grow this community of young game makers. Um, and, you know, we charge a little bit, but it goes all the way towards, uh, there's no profits. It gets all donated. And then we can just continue having this um, community that we're building up. And it's just not for kids. It's actually as much for, I would say, the game development community as it is for the kids. Because once you've actually attended, volunteered, or taught, it's, it becomes something different for you, I think, and I feel like a lot of people have felt that way. So I guess where am I now with it? Um, I've had over 170, it's, a, it's around 190 uh, uh, kids attend. And this is uh, between three events, two in New York, uh, one in Boston. That's uh, no advertising, no reach out. That's just me saying I'm doing this event and I put it on Twitter. So 180 is not bad. We have over 48 games made. And so what we do is we try to uh, teach some kind of templated game that's easily customizable. So it could be Unity, Construct 2, Game Maker, Phaser JS, uh, you know, Scratch, whatever it may be. 
And we teach them the basics. We try to teach them some code lessons. So even in Scratch, I'm going through like what a logic block is and like what's an if and, 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 and you know, what's a condition that's being met and things like that. We try to teach them code fundamentals, but we also try to give them something that they can make their own quite easily so that there's a big reward for them. Um, we've had, yeah, four events. Two of them were uh, very kind of large, let's run three classes, four classes at the same time, and at the end of the day, let's demo. So a lot of us have gone to play testing or demo nights. We made the kids demo their games. And um, I don't even know where to start with that. It's so awesome because they're so just proud of what they've built. Um, and then we've donated over uh, 3,200. Um, and that's not even time put towards it. That's just ticket sales. Um, so where do I want to go with it? Um, I want to reach over a thousand kids. Uh, I want to have over a hundred games made. I want to get some of those games in a store. You know, I want, I want some of the kids who are, especially in New York, because we're running it once a month, I want them to start at something and I want at the end of the year them have something that we can submit somewhere that they're proud of. Um, I want to help them get there. Um, I'm going to have over 12 events, and so uh, I'm spending my time and dime um, to travel to other cities, uh, working with people in the community, uh, whether it be indie developers, whether it be companies to donate space, um, whatever it may be, to kind of put on these kind of one-day events where, where kids can learn how to make games. Um, so I have San Francisco booked. I have Atlanta booked. Um, I'm going to be doing uh, London, I'm going to be doing Brighton, um, you know, I have a bunch of them kind of lined up, and I want to donate over $10,000 to an organization, again, that's probably better, <laughs> better equipped to do this than I am. Um, that's where we're going, and so kind of, I guess, the importance of when it comes to the gender gap and thinking about those things is that I feel like we're teaching these, these kids that code is creative. When people think about coding, they think like, oh, one, zero, sweatpants, you know, whatever. whatever. Whatever popular culture has told us. Like, if you're a coder, you're like living in a basement, wearing pants you should never, you know, be seen in public, and like, you know, probably drinking copious amounts of caffeine and whatever bad stereotype there is, right? We all know that's kind of bullshit, right? So, like, I want them to understand that code is creative. It's a creative act. I mean, it's problem solving, but especially once you get into games, you're, you're mixing so many different disciplines. And that's not for the faint of heart, right? Like, someone who's a really good game developer, when you think about all that stuff, they have appreciation for sound, for design, for gameplay, for narrative. Like, that's a really well-rounded individual. Like, it's unfortunate people don't you know, fail to recognize that sometimes. And so trying to teach them that the code is a creative outlet, that code is an option, much like sitting down and drawing on paper is an outlet for you, that that's really important to us. Coding has no gender, you know, pronoun. It's, it's not about um, she's a female game maker or, you know, or any of those kind of like adjectives that we want to put. I mean, the only adjective I care about at this point right now is that you're young. That's it. You know, so I guess I'm ageist. I don't know. But like, you know, the idea that I don't want them to think about those things. I want them to work together like this. I want them to collaborate like that. Because my hope is that they're going to do that and they're going to grow up doing that. And then they're going to grow up, you know, correcting other people when they see things like that. You know, I had one of the kids who I had actually heard, he was, oh, he was the cutest little thing, but man, whew. And he said to someone, oh, you throw like a girl, because they were playing like this kind of um, Xbox game or whatever during the break. And I was like, I didn't hear that, did I? And he's like, oh, I don't understand what's bad with it. And then I had to explain the whole thing. And I was like, oh, you can say that if you want to say that. Just keep up with me if you're going to say that, because I'm throwing way better than you. <laughs> right? Like, so just be careful what you're saying. So I never thought of it like that. You know, this little eight-year-old, I'm trying to rationalize with him, like, He's like, I did not sign up for this, you know. And then I'm trying to, like, also kind of teach these future developers or game developers that if you see it, you can be it, right? So if they see me, you know, out in the open, coding in the open, teaching in the open, you know, and I'm teaching both genders, 
that you know that 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 girl can say I can be a game developer and I want to do this and that that boy also is like I want to do it too she's awesome and you know and for me this is kind of amazing because I think it's really important when it comes to diversity that we have those representations you need to be able to relate you need to be able to see some piece of yourself somewhere right like it gives you that sense of belonging and it doesn't matter if it's a gender or you know if it's a cultural background or any of those kind of things whatever it may be you know maybe you're maybe you're like me and you're older and you come to these things you're like I just need to see another older person right <laughs> like maybe that's what it is but you need to see that in order to feel like you can be it and so you know having uh, I think having a lot of women teach um, I had a girl named Olga teach a game maker class, and she did a great job. And she had like 45 kids, and they were like kicking butt on what they were doing. And she was awesome. And she was, you know, an illustrator who learned how to code, for example. So it's, you know, bringing that diversity to the backgrounds. Um, I'm just going to show, I guess, a couple of pictures from uh, the events. But these these guys right here, um, that one guy, Colby, he... Uh, they come every time, and every time it's just like, hey, what's up, Stacy? Yeah, I'm making games. Like, he's like that kid. That's like how he talks. I'm going to make a game. We're going to make a game. You know, and then at the end, he's like, yeah, high five. We made a game. And you get these kids who are like starting to come regularly, who are also trying to bring the new people in. Um, here's a, one of the examples of one of the big day events in the office where we had. Um, 200 people in the office. We had uh, 80 kids. We had 50 volunteers, like 50 people who were not parents, right? Like to me, that's unreal. Uh, and, and those volunteers were game makers, designers, illustrators, everything of that sort. And so this is us kind of lining up, getting ready to do a demo. Um, we have a couple kids doing their demos. Look at this kid. He's so happy. He's like, yeah, I know Construct 2. Watch this. You know, and he's like nailing out a game. Um, we have, for example, um, this kid Zach, who's he built like a Construct 2 game up there, and it doesn't do it just, uh, justice. It's really lovely. Like he he's just really talented. Um, you know, and he during the whole class he wasn't even paying attention. He was kind of listening and doing his own thing. And then, um, you know, we have uh, younger kids as well uh, doing Scratch. Um, the youngest I think we have, her name was Emma. She was five. Um, I'll show a picture. I don't know if we have it, but she made a game about babies dropping from the sky. And that if you didn't catch them, they exploded. So you were a princess and you were doing this, trying to catch babies. Right? And she made it with her dad. Um, and they figured it out. So he learned as well. Uh, but it was her idea. It's got to be a princess and we need to catch babies. And she demoed it. And when she demoed it, it was the cutest little thing because it was just like, you know, this you couldn't see her. Like, you literally couldn't see her at the podium. You just heard this voice. It was like, you're a princess and you need to catch babies. If you don't, oh, oh, it explodes. <laughs> right? Thanks. So, you know, just that idea of some of these items. Um, don't know if this one's going to... I've got like one minute, not even a minute, my time's up. But you know, kids making games like this in a day, for example, not even. Um, and then you get parents sending you like really amazing emails who are telling you that you're a good person and you're like, holy crap. <laughs> like, you need to sit down with me for two drinks and find this out. So, you know, and then you have your dad texting you something like that and you're like, great. If we think about if this is our future, I think, wow, my job here is kind of done, right? I've done something kind of good. But then I just realized it's probably only just begun. And so I'm Stacey Mulcahy. I'm Bitchu Codes on Twitter. I want to change things, not fix them. I teach kids to love code. They teach me change is possible. And if you have any time to volunteer or are at all interested in this, please come join me. We would love to have you. And that's where you can find us.